So if you use any kind of creative app, chances are your head is exploding with all the keyboard shortcuts you're supposed to remember. I have a solution for you. Let's ramble. Hold up. Things go well when I pull up. They all on me like it wants. Hey, what's up guys? It is great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and the other stuff. So if you've been to this channel before, you know I'm kind of into productivity and I'm constantly trying to streamline my workflow. I run my own business during the day and I wanna make sure I carve out plenty of time for my family. And of course, there is this YouTube channel. I upload at least twice a week, subscribe if you haven't already, and creating those videos takes a lot of time. I love it, but it's very time consuming. And because time is precious, anything that helps me be more efficient is a win in my book. This little guy is the Tourbox Neo and I am completely and utterly in love with it. What can I say? I love me some good tech. Full disclosure, I saw this thing in somebody else's video and I reached out to Torbox to see if they would send me a unit to review and they said yes. So thank you very much to Torbox for sending this over and no, they're not sponsoring the video. I will say whatever I want and they did not get to see the video ahead of publishing. They're gonna see the video the same time as you guys. So let's have a look at what's in the box, talk about the design a little bit and then I'll show you what this thing actually does and how it helps me edit much, much faster. So the tour box comes in a very small package and the contents are super straightforward. There's a bit of documentation and there's two little pouches. This one contains the actual unit. And the first thing you notice is that it's pretty hefty. And that's a good thing. You want this thing to be planted firmly on your desk and not move. It connects to your computer via USB-C, a whole bunch of buttons that I will explain in a minute, and some rubber feet on the bottom to keep it in place and to protect your desk in case you're not using a desk mat. And the other pouch has a cable in it, which is a USB-A to USB-C cable. And I really wish it was a USB-C to USB-C cable because most Macs don't have USB-A connections anymore, which means you will need an adapter or a dongle. And that's it, that's all we get in the box. So it's really, really straightforward. The next thing you wanna do after plugging it into your computer is install the Torbox console, which is a piece of software that will help you organize and map the buttons on the unit. And as you can see, there's a lot of them. So it is important that you get it right. So I guess there is a little bit of a setup process, but in this case, that's a good thing because everybody's different. We all like to do things a certain way and what makes sense to me might not make sense to you at all. The tour box does come with some presets for the Adobe suite like Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere, but I work with Final Cut Pro, so I have to configure this thing from scratch. So the basic principle is really simple. The tour box has a bunch of wheels and buttons that will replace your most used keyboard shortcuts and to a certain extent, your mouse. If you're watching this video, you're probably doing some editing of your own, so you know that most things are done with keyboard shortcuts. You want to make a cut in the timeline, you hit Command B. You want to extend or shorten a clip by a single frame, you hit period or comma. Undo is Command Z, redo is Command Shift Z, etc, etc. These are not fun to remember, and it's also not very practical to move your hands off of your mouse and your trackpad to do the shortcuts. I use a trackpad to do certain things like scroll and zoom. It's just not very efficient. So with this new setup, my left hand never leaves the tour box and my right hand stays on my mouse. No more shortcuts. So let me give you an example. Normally, if I wanna cut out a part of a clip, I would skip to the right frame, Command B, Command B, and then delete. And maybe I wanna undo it, I will have to press Command Z. Now let's do the same thing with a tour box. I just use the wheel on top to skip single frames, click, 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 done. And if I wanna undo it, I just click again. You probably didn't even see that because undo for me is just moving my pinky. And if I wanna play back the sequence to see what it looks like, I just hit this little bar instead of having to move my hand to hit the space bar on my keyboard. Now, all of this might sound really dumb and a little bit petty, but trust me, all these little time savers really add up on a full edit. So how do we get the tour box to do what we want it to do? Like I mentioned earlier, we have the Torbox console and we should really view this as a blank canvas. It shows you the full layout of all of the buttons and all you have to do really is stare at this thing for a minute and then ask yourself, what do I want these buttons to do for me? And then go into the software and make that happen. It's really simple. You click on whatever button you wanna map, for instance, the tall button right here, and then it asks you what keyboard shortcut you want that button to replace. I use the tall button as the blade tool, so I click Command and B. The short button I wanna to use to delete what I just cut. So here I leave the combination buttons blank and I simply click backspace. 
click OK, and that is now what this button does. So you can really make this thing work exactly how you want. The little side button by my pinky will undo whatever I just did, and if I want to redo, I press this little guy right here. The D-pad I have set to extend or shorten a clip by nudging it one frame at a time. The little scroll wheel to the left is used to zoom in and out, and the big one on top, which for me is like the main one, moves me through the timeline frame by frame. If I want to move faster in the timeline, I just use this wheel right here. And what's cool about that one is that when I move it faster, it will also move faster across the timeline. I don't use my trackpad anymore. I barely use my keyboard. Both hands are just comfortably resting on the mouse and the tour box. Now, it did take some trial and error for me to figure out the ideal layout for me. I mapped and remapped keys quite a bit, but once I managed to map it in a way that made sense to me, it took me about an hour, maybe two, to really get into it, and now it's just infinitely faster. So guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think this might help you edit better or faster, or would you rather stick to the trusty old keyboard? Guys, if the video is useful to you, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. Subscribe if you want. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.